details of the complete response. There are two ways to view the individual pieces of the complete response. There's the math seven approach, the mathematical approach versus the intuitive approach. And each of these approaches, in the end, both calculate the same final solution, but the language differs. So let's separate the two. Let's start with the math seven approach. or the mathematical approach. What you find in this situation that we talk about the complete solution. And the complete solution is a combination of the homogeneous plus the particular solutions. They talk about it being a linear combination. I will graphically, it's definitely a superposition. So if I write out our equation, it reads VC of T is then going to be the homogeneous solution, which is the initial times e to the minus t, but in this situation, it's typically coupled also with the combination of these two, where we have e to the minus tau plus v final. Now, there's a reason why it's written this way, because when you write it this way and you solve a differential equation, it really comes out this way. And many textbooks call this the natural response or the homogeneous solution. But I'm going to keep to the language of response because that's more appropriate. On the other hand, this term is the force response. That means the capacitor is being drove to that final steady state. So just to be clear with my words, where the particular student uh, solution is viewed as the permanent state of the capacitor. And I should be more careful when I say capacitor, it's really of the circuit. It's the permanent state of the capacitor. And typically, we define this as V final when there is a constant input. In other words, the source is constant. This is by far the easier 
form to deal with since it is a logically mathematical solution. In other words, calculate and shut up. Don't worry about the details. But if you're going to worry about the details, we should really pay attention to the next approach. And this is where we want to come in. I would say that this is the intuitive approach. And this is without a doubt what I like the most. This one we have here, and I should isolate this. This is not called a response. This is called a solution, a complete solution. The intuitive approach has a different language. And what it says is that it's the complete response. And when we say the word response is, how does the capacitor respond to the conditions that it's put into? And you're going to find that there are two pieces. There's the natural response. So when you look at the natural response, there is no input source. Plus, there's a force response. And the force response essentially says it pays attention to the source, but it assumes zero initial conditions. So this is actually my preferred way to actually think about things. So when you write this out, it reads V, C of T. The natural response is V initial times E to the minus T over tau plus V final times the quantity one minus E to the minus T over tau. And the solution to both the mathematical approach to the intuitive approach is exactly the same. The complete response or the complete solution is exactly the same, but there's different language. This guy is the natural response. And this one over here is the forced response. There's many reasons why one would really like this approach. But one of the main reasons is that the language here in the intuitive approach is exactly what happens in second order circuits. It's also exactly what happens in other physical systems. To visualize the complete response, there are three separate parts or pieces. 
So if you look at the details, you're going to see that the first piece here is called the natural response. And that has a particular meaning. But that term here, as we've already shown here, is this exponential decaying term. Then, of course, there's the forced response. This has the shape of V final. And then I get a term 1 minus e to the minus t over tau, which increases or decreases depending on what we look at the system. But there's a third piece that people forget about, and that is the complete response. And the complete response is a superposition of these two states. In other words, this, these two states says that V initial e to the minus t over tau plus V final times the quantity 1 minus e to the t over tau is the complete response. So the idea now that I want to force here is that what does this all intuitively mean? And the way I'm going to look at this is that I want to separate what is the natural response versus what is the force response. And I'm going to do this by a very, hopefully, straightforward analogy. So suppose you are pushing a little person. What do I call a little person? is a small child on a swing. So what I really need to focus on is what do I mean by the natural response in this situation? So if you pull the swing upwards and hold it in place, this is the moment or this is the initial moment before release at t equal to zero. So you have to imagine you're holding this little person on a swing and you raise them up and then you're going to let them swing. So if You just let them go, and this is important, and do not push the swing anymore, or again, the system's behavior is purely a response to 
this initial condition. And when you look at that initial condition, they start above the equal equilibrium point. What we say here is that this is the natural response. So when I look at the natural response, you could imagine that I only pull back the swing, I hold it in place, and then I let it go, and I don't touch it again. So what's going to happen? The swing, because of the friction at the connection point, rubbing up and down, is going to take this thing and it's going to dampen it out all by itself until it comes to rest. That's what I mean by the natural response. However, you cannot stop yourself from pushing the swing again. No, no. Just pushing the swing. Because you want to make this little person happy and you want to keep them going so you keep adding. Okay? You keep adding to the swing. So since you can't stop yourself from pushing the swing, this appear, this is now the input to the system. You are forcing an input that causes a forced response to your push. Which is clearly different from the natural response. So when I look at the natural response and I look at the force response, the complete response has to be a superposition of those two situations. So let's put in to words each of the uh, each of these three situations. So the first one I want to talk about this. So now I want to apply this thinking to the RC circuit. So let's do that. So the first thing that we want to look at is that we want to look at the natural response which is defined as V initial in other words the initial condition times E to the minus T over tau. So how do I put this into words? You're going to have to humor me. I don't know how to write this out clearly, but let me give you a stab. The 
natural response refers to an automatic reaction that occurs to a switch being thrown. And this is critical. Without any prior knowledge. Think about the swing. I pull back the swing and I just release it. Do I know what's going to happen in the future, whether you're going to push the swing or not? Of course you don't. That is, it happens by ignoring the input source. Once again, when I released the swing that I know that there was gonna be a following push, of course I didn't know. The natural response tells us what the capacitors initial condition does as its voltage is allowed to decay. I want to use the word dissipate, but dissipate typically means resistive dissipation to zero. That is not what I'm thinking at all. So that's what I would say is the natural response. Two. Now we want to talk about the forced response. And in this language, we call this V final. In other words, the circuit over time is driving this guy to be V final. Okay. So now let's be careful with our words. A forced response is what is the circuits, in this case, what's the capacitor's response? Unfortunately, I can't really just say the capacitor because it's a circuit that we're talking about and the capacitor is responding not only to what happens when the switch is thrown, but also to the resistors in the circuit. So what is the circuit's response to the constant input source, and this is key, without no initial conditions. It's only how the capacitor behaves. So, to say it in a different language, we're going to say that 
the forced response is caused directly by the external power supply. And of course, when I say the word power supply, that really means either a voltage source or a current source while temporarily forgetting about the initial conditions. Now that seems, so what we're seeing here is that, let's say that one more time, the force response is caused directly by the external power supply while temporarily forgetting about the initial conditions. But this gives us a new differential equation. It gives us the particular differential equation at zero plus. So we are now looking for that solution. And then finally, we get to the complete response. So when I say the complete response, we say here that it's a superposition of Vc of t, which will be then V natural plus V forced. It's a combination of the two things that we just talked about. It's the graph that shows everything. The complete response is the superposition. And like I said before, in math, they talk about it being a linear combination. I strongly believe that the right word is superposition of the natural and forced responses. So in other words, Vc of t has our natural response plus our forced response. Oops. Which is one minus e to the minus t over tau. You can clearly see that it's a combination of these two here. So the key thing here is the plotting of these. So now let's plot these individual responses. And it will summarize very clearly what's going on. So the key thing here is that you got to keep looking at the solution here. Okay. So in fact, I think I'm going to color these. I'm going to say that this is the green solution. I'm going to say that this is the red solution. And I'm going to say that this guy here is going to be the purple solution. So now let's graph this. 
So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go. So this is actually pretty hard for me to draw. So let's see what happens. So of course I'm plotting VC of T. There's three parts. So what do I know? Look at the initial part. The natural response says I come in here with V initial. And of course this is VC of zero minus. And what does it do here? It actually decays to zero. This is the natural response. So if I have a capacitor that's charged and then a switch is thrown from its initial condition, it decays to zero. Now I have the force response. And for the sake of argument, I'm going to say that this point here, I'm going to say that this is our final steady state value, VOC. But VOC, excuse me, the force response does not include initial condition mathematically. So when I look at this thing, this thing charges up from zero and then it reaches the steady state up here. This right here is the force response. So what is the complete response? Well, initially, the complete response has to start with this, the initial condition. So in this situation, it starts from here, and you could see how they end up matching. This graph, I think, says it all.